Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now the question before us today is this, is all hardware accelerated ray tracing the same? Or are there different techniques and different levels of complexity that I use maybe in one card or in one system compared to another system? Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now, often in technology, people latch on to a kind of a key word, maybe a marketing message, and they kind of make their purchasing decisions based on that one thing. You know, for example, oh, my next PC is gonna have a processor that's clocked at 2.2 gigahertz, because, you know, I had one that was clocked at two gigahertz and, and that was no good, but this one's gonna be a 2.2 gigahertz, as if, you know, just 2.2 gigahertz is really the big difference that would be why one PC would behave better than another, ignoring, you know, the number of cores, number of threads, the speed of the disk, the IO subsystem, the speed of the memory, you know, all the other things that, that go into it, you know. And that can affect uh, people in two ways. One is that they can have a bad experience of something and they kind of lump it under that, under that keyword they've attached to. Oh, I tried Android once, but it was slow and laggy and, and, and it kept crashing. And actually they only, it's because they bought a very low end, even maybe an unbranded uh, Android phone and they kind of blame Android because that's the thing it's running. And of course, compared to, you know, even a, a middle range, uh, an older iPhone, the experience would be, would be vastly different. But of course you can't blame Android for that. There were other factors like the price of the handset, the manufacturer and, and loads of other things. And, and again, you know, graphics cards, you know, how many cores they got, oh, my next PC is gonna have 300 cores, you know, 700 cores in the GPU. Whereas another would say, oh, but I've only got six cores in my mobile phone, you know, and people latch onto the idea of cores and, you know. So when we get to ray tracing, this can also be a problem because ray tracing is becoming more and more of a thing. And you've got ray tracing on the desktop and you've got ray tracing will be coming to mobile. And I've talked about that in another video. And of course, is there a difference between these different levels of hardware accelerated ray tracing? Is it all the same thing? Or if you say, oh, I had a hard, I had ray tracing and it, and it wasn't very good, actually maybe there are better systems and worse systems. Now, Imagination, who are of course very keen to launch ray tracing into the mobile market, have come up with a system of levels that describe the different things that can happen inside hardware ray tracing to try to differentiate one system from another. Now, obviously they're doing that for their advantage because they're pretty confident that their technology is gonna be high up this list. But it's worth looking at to try to understand how the different types of hardware ray tracing uh, can work. Okay, so here are the six levels that Imagination are proposing and like all good computer scientists it starts at zero and goes all the way through to level five meaning there are six levels in total so let's just go through these we won't we'll go through them individually now to see what they are uh, starting with legacy solutions at level zero <music> So basically the legacy solution is the fact that this isn't the first time we're talking about ray tracing. This isn't the first time people have tried to do kind of, you know, hardware accelerated ray tracing. In the past, there were things like OpenRL. Uh, and basically level zero is anything that was previously tried, maybe didn't succeed. However, there was lessons to learn from it. They're calling it legacy uh, ray tracing solutions. Not really that important for us today. If someone said I've released a level zero uh, ray tracing hardware, then really that wouldn't have much to tell us. <laughs> Now, level one is where things start to get interesting. Now, if you remember, a GPU has a, a shader cores on it, they're called, that can run programs. And you load a little program onto that shader core and then it runs and it can do the same thing in parallel for all the pixels. Now, the idea is, is that you're able to load up the shader core and do things like all of the stuff we see today in rasterization-based uh, graphics. So in this sense, uh, shader cores are not designed to run ray tracing, but you can put some level of ray tracing on there. However, it does struggle to kind of certainly give you real time ray tracing, but it is good maybe so kind of limited effects that you want to have uh, inside of a game and to kind of get the best performance. There are lots and lots of hacks and shortcuts because really you're trying to take a piece of hardware that's designed to do one thing and make it do another thing uh, and it manages it, 
but maybe it's not uh, going to be a long-term solution. So that's level one, software for ray tracing running on a traditional GPU. Now, if you remember about ray tracing, the idea is you trace, so follow the path of a ray of light and see what it interacts with, what it intersects with in the scene. So basically to do that, you need what they call ray box and ray triangle testers to see whether a triangle uh, and a ray are actually uh, meeting each other. And then you can say, right now we can look at the color and everything of that particular uh, intersection. Now, Imagination have basically worked out that you can build some very specific ray box and ray trace testing hardware that's not your normal shader core. It's a special piece of hardware and it can be up to 44 times smaller than what you need if you were trying to do this using a traditional shader core. So if you do have special hardware, you can do ray box and ray triangle testing in hardware efficiently uh, and, and you can do it uh, at high performance and with less silicon area. So level two basically means that it's the, the lowest level of hardware specific testing, which is this where the interaction, the intersection between the triangles and the rays are. If you can do that in hardware, then you've, you've made a big step forward because now you've moved away from traditional GPU rasterization technology and you're now putting in something that's saying, hey, I'm going to worry about how these rays interact, how they intersect with the objects in the scene. So that's level two. If you've got level two hardware in there, that means you've actually got specific hardware and it's doing the barest minimum that hardware can do to do ray tracing. Of course, the thing about ray tracing is, is there's lots and lots of rays because you've got light coming from all different types of directions. And one of the ways you can kind of make it more efficient is by using bounding volume hierarchies. So BVH. So here you've got the example on the top right hand screen, they've got a picture of this bunny rabbit. And of course it's made up of, you know, triangles and each of those have kind of got their own little uh, box of whether that triangle fits in, is inside that, that cube or not. And then as you grow up, there are bigger cubes. And then ultimately you've got one big cube that says, inside this bounded area is the bunny rabbit. And if your ray shoots past this uh, box, then it isn't gonna interact with the bunny rabbit, so it's got nothing to do with the bunny. So what you can actually do is you can create in hardware a way of, go, uh, of processing those uh, bounded volume hierarchies to speed up the uh, process. So it's called BVH walking. You're in the hardware, you're saying, well, let's start a bigger. Does the ray hit here? Yes, it does. Okay. Does it hit this one? Oh, no, it doesn't. So it misses the, the tail of the bunny by just, you know, this one. Yes, it hits that. Does it hit the truck? And you can go through it at deeper and deeper levels. And of course, at the top level, you can very, very quickly discard all that computation that you don't need for a particular ray because it's not going to hit that particular object. So not only are you testing at level two, just the triangles uh, and the interaction. Now you're saying, let's add in some kind of some efficiency here by saying, does it even come near this area? And that's level three processing, an upgrade from, from level two. While ray tracing is making the headlines, so also is machine learning. So if you want to know more about machine learning and data science in general, then here there is this deep dive into machine learning and data analysis. It's eight courses over 48 hours of content, including TensorFlow and Python and R and neural networks. And there's just so much stuff here. So if you want to learn more about what really is going to be the next era of computing, machine learning, then why not have a look at this course? $35. And if you buy it through the link, which will be in the description, you also help out this channel. Okay, let's carry on. But of course, the great thing about uh, ray tracing is the whole thing of reflections and shadows. And that comes about because a ray bounces. So a ray going, uh, you know, and interacting with one object is fine. But at some point, it may get absorbed by that object. It may get reflected partially. There may be scattering effects. So, of course, it's the when you get to the second level, what happens to that ray 
after its first interaction, that's when things, of course, can get more complicated. If you built a very big scene with lots and lots of mirrors in it, and you had, you know, a light source and a camera, you can imagine that those things are bouncing back and forth all over the place. So one of the things you want to do in terms of efficiency of processing is the rays that are heading in the same direction, you kind of want to group them together. Why? Because they're heading off towards the same object, which means that you're going to access the data in memory about that object. And that's the key thing because, of course, memory access in computing terms, I know it's hard to believe, but in memory, in computing terms, memory access is incredibly slow. It's, very, it's, it's power hungry. That's why we have caches. That's why the level zip one caches and level two caches on, on CPUs and processors because we're trying to limit going out on a bus, out to a different component, get waiting for it to come back with the answer. And if you look at this picture here in the bottom right hand corner, you can see that there's this, this uh, person here with a yellow jumper and they are reflected many, many times in this wobbly shaped object, which means that when a ray bounces in any of these places, they can be grouped together saying, we know this is heading off in the same direction, so we can limit the amount of access to the memory, not time and time and time and time again for every single ray, but we've already got that stuff in memory and we can now kind of have some coherency so that we get efficiency. So level three was about efficiency because of the bounded volume hierarchy. Now we've got efficiency when the ray has been reflected and we wanna make sure the rays that are common, that have coherency moving in the same direction can be grouped together to access that other object and its bounding volume, you know, its bounding volume box and, and everything uh, later on. And that, of course, that's great for performance as well, because if you've improved efficiency, not only have you improved efficiency of the uh, of how much energy it takes, you've also improved efficiency of waiting for things from the memory, which increases performance. <laughs> And then finally, the last kind of, you know, cherry on the cake is you've got these volume, uh, bounded volume hierarchies, but that's great for a static scene. You've, you know, you've defined the static scene. It's got your bunny rabbit in it, as we had earlier on. Uh, and you can even move the camera around in that scene. And that's absolutely fine. The, the BVHs stay exactly the same. So you can transverse them. You can walk them. You can do all that stuff we've talked about. Levels two, three, and four. But if you've got a game... Well, actually, there's lots of moving in a game. There's animations going on. The main characters are moving. The enemies are moving. The, you know, whatever's happening in the game. And so all those objects change. And they can change even, you know, several times a second as things are going on. So you have to rebuild the BVH at some point to get the benefits of levels, you know, three and four. You're going to need to rebuild them. Now, you can do that in software. You can rebuild that and, and send it over to the, the dedicated hardware and say, this is the new structure because the game's moved on. These are where the new characters are. This is what's happening. Okay, but it would be great if you could actually build those BVHs in hardware. So you've got a kind of bit of dedicated hardware that you say, well, here is the new information. Now create me that new uh, bounded volume hierarchy, which you can then also use to actually render the scene. So if you have BVH hardware assisted building, then that is really uh, a level five stuff that can improve again, the efficiency uh, and the performance of the uh, GPU. <laughs> So, of course, this is coming from imagination. It was useful to look at what is available, but they're saying it will be good to realize that it's not just the brute force of the number of rays that can be processed in any given you know, second or whatever. Actually, there's more going on here to do with things like the bounded volume hierarchies, building of those structures uh, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and of course, they point out that they've offered level five ray tracing solutions in hardware since 2014 with the PowerVR GR6500. And we are waiting now for the new GPU from Imagination. Of course, this is really a primer for that. I'm expecting it to turn up in, in a matter of days, really. And I will keep you informed when it comes about and we'll see what Imagination have to offer when it comes to ray tracing uh, on mobile. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video looking at hardware ray tracing. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, well, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.